Hello. Today I'm going to take you on a journey with me. It's a journey involving a chance that I'm taking right now that they have asked me to tell you about. But before I can really take you on that journey, I need for you to experience what I was feeling at a very important time in that journey. So I'd like to ask you all to close your eyes and think back to a time that you volunteered for a charity for the first time. Maybe you walk dogs at a kennel, you might have given out food at a soup kitchen, might have tabled at an event. Think back to that moment and bring it into your mind. Now keep your eyes closed and I'd like you to think about how it made you feel. Did you feel that your time was well utilized that day? Did you feel that the time you spent really made a significant difference? And most importantly, did you enjoy yourself enough that you are still volunteering with that organization today? Okay, I'd like to ask you to open your eyes and keep those thoughts in your head as I take you on the journey that brought me here today. So oddly enough, this journey of volunteering for me all started with this. I was a girl from a tiny town with enormous dreams from the Midwest. I was the kind of kid that had posters on my wall with mansions and Ferraris and it said, ye who dies with the most toys wins. I was happy, but I wanted to be filthy rich kind of happy. So I came flying out of college with my business degree, rode the dot-com wave, started my first business when I was 27. I was aggressively pursuing the American dream. And in my late 20s, after I had achieved all various things, and I had it all mapped out, I actually had my life plan in a PowerPoint presentation. And I'm driving home one day on a Friday afternoon thinking about this plan and how I'd reached this certain point. And it dawned on me and it just, it hit me like I'd ran into a brick wall that I had achieved all these things, but I was not even an ounce happier. And that's why I had been doing this. I wanted this euphoric happiness. And I just remember just, the, just feeling so angry. I had worked so hard. How was it possible that I didn't feel any happier? I wasn't really less happy, although I was now carrying around the stress of this lifestyle that I had created on my shoulders. But I, I was so perplexed by this. And, and I went home, popped open a bottle of wine, <laughs> spent that whole weekend contemplating. And a couple months after, thinking, what, what was I missing? Where had I gone wrong? Got out my uh, dorky PowerPoint and, and really analyzed this. And after some time and a lot of journaling and thinking, I decided ah, I knew what it was. The thing I hadn't put into my plan is that I needed to give back. I needed to find a way to give back to the world. So I did just that. I looked into volunteering. I thought that's what I needed to do. And then this euphoric happiness, it was all just going to come together for me. So I looked into volunteering at an orphanage. I volunteered at an animal shelter for a while. I'm sorry, I volunteered at a homeless shelter for a while. And eventually I settled in at an animal shelter that had some open positions for people to walk dogs and clean kennels and do things. And I did just that. And for a couple months, that was wonderful. It was such a nice break from my daily routine, you know, nice, nice break. Um, but I remember, what, but I kept started thinking to myself, am I really making a difference? You know, somebody with a professional skill, is this a good use of my time? And it really came, <laughs> came to light for me when one day I was down on the floor just like this guy, I was scrubbing these kennels, and it dawned on me at that very moment that my house cleaning company was cleaning my house. And I thought, isn't that ridiculous? I should have just cleaned my own house and donated the money. It probably would have meant a lot more to the animal shelter. So at that moment, I decided that I, I had to do something that, that was a way to make a bigger impact. So within a matter of months, I'm on the board of directors and I'm chairing the annual fundraiser. And that was wonderful. I was using my skills. I was definitely making a difference to that animal shelter. But now what I'd done is I had just created an unpaid part-time job for myself. <laughs> And it was way too much. Lots of infighting, various things happening. Anybody who's really done some serious volunteering, you know what I'm talking about. And in a couple of months, or a couple of years, I burned out. And so, unfortunately, I'm not still volunteering with that animal shelter today. But I was forever changed by this feeling of making the world a better place. I had found that summit that I was so looking for. I had found this euphoric happiness. What I thought was going to be this tiny piece of my big master plan ended up being the entire puzzle. 
And I knew that I wanted to find a way to wake up every day, day and feel that feeling. I wanted to do my part to make the world a better place. So I got off the corporate war path, which was quite, taking quite a big chance, and my family thought I was absolutely out of my mind. I um, put plans in place for my business to step away from it, and I set out down this road. I had absolutely no idea what I was going to do. I didn't know if I was going to go to work for a charity, I was going to start an organization, but I was going to figure it out. And I thought the best place to start is maybe see if I could come up with a solution to what I had encountered that had caused me to give up on volunteering. So I took a step back and I thought I want to take a look at what were the major things that had caused me and many other volunteers that I had worked side by side with to eventually leave. The turnover is tremendous in volunteerism. And the first thing that I really broke down was a huge imbalance. For the most part, when you go to volunteer with a charity, you really have two options. Either you're stuffing envelopes and walking dogs, or you are all in. You're on the board of directors, you're handling the books for the organization, you're doing something major. And there really wasn't something very in between. If you wanted to use your skills or do something where you felt you were making a difference, there was no way to do that in small chunks. And I felt that that was a big problem. And the other thing that I really, really struck me on why there was so much turnover was an enormous mismatch in people's skills. I was very fortunate. I'm a marketing person. Any charity can use those skills, right? But what if you're a plumber and you want to help bring an end to human trafficking? You're going to be stuffing envelopes. And I don't mean to put down stuffing envelopes. Believe me, there's days now that I don't want to think one more strategic thought. I just want to go hug a puppy. But, but you know, for a lot of people, they want to use their skills and they want to do something bigger, but their skills don't match what the charity needs. And that's a huge problem. And unfortunately, I did a lot of thinking, but I had not come up with any type of a solution. No Eureka had come to me. So I thought, I'm not giving up. I'm going to keep looking around. Something's going to come to me. So I did a lot of volunteering. I volunteered for other organizations. I traveled overseas doing volunteer travel, looking for inspiration everywhere from different business models and bartering networks and things. I was trying to find a solution. Along this journey, I actually went to work for a charity for a while. And eventually, I started my own organization called Fix It. And I'm so thankful that I did this as part of the journey because now I got to see everything from the inside perspective of this charity industry. I got to be inside it and I discovered some other things that are really crucial reasons why we're not making more progress with the issues we're facing. So one thing that I really learned, um, which is, it might, brings a smile to my face actually, is there is almost nothing that is better can happen in my day than when I get a call or an email from somebody that says, I believe in so much in what your organization's doing that I want to give, of you, give my time to you. Really, that is just one of the most heartwarming, wonderful feelings. But what I also learned is I would say probably about 90% of those volunteers within about a three to six month period that once made me feel so happy will make me feel like doing this. And if you've ever had the pleasure of managing a volunteer team, I know you know what I'm talking about. Managing volunteers is an absolute nightmare. And I know by saying that I'm breaking some volunteer manager's etiquette code, but this is Ted and I'm putting it out there and I'm telling you it's a nightmare. I mean, if a, if a corporation had to manage an entire company with staff that could show up when they felt like it, do what they felt like doing and not do what they didn't feel like, cancel at the last minute, and sometimes poof, just completely disappear and you never hear from them again. It is, it is unbelievably frustrating um, if you've never had to experience this. And then the other lesson that I learned being on the inside, I have to say, unfortunately, was even more heartbreaking. Um, and it nearly broke me in this journey. And that is that, in my opinion, fundraising is just a very politically correct way of saying begging. And it's unfortunate that the people who are stepping up and trying to make the world a better place are forced to do that. And until you've done this, you, it's really very difficult to explain. I could do an entire TED talk on the, the challenges of fundraising, but I'll, I'll try and give you the highlights. Um, first of all, if you have an innovative idea, forget about it. You know, there's plenty of grants out there if you want funding for the way things have always been done. But if you're trying to really do something innovative, that is not rewarded in the charity world the way it is in the for-profit world. So that was a real lesson learned for me coming from a business perspective. Also, pretty much everybody that I go to talk to assumes I'm a thief until we prove them wrong. 
And so anytime I see something on CNN about such and such charity stolen, I'm like, oh, oh God. Because there's just, there's the, the few bad seeds out there that are ruining it for all these people. I have never, ever taken a dime from any of the charity projects that I've done, yet I'm constantly proving to people that I'm not trying to embezzle all of their money. Um, and, and then there's, there's other things. One of the, one of the most frustrating and, and most interesting has been something where when you do finally get somebody to give you funds, they only, it comes with this little kind of tiny print that says this can only go toward program fees. And that's really just a twisted way of saying this can only go, this can't pay for anything operationally. So to try and put that in perspective for you, imagine if you were running a for-profit company that was getting money from investors, or let's say the stock market, but whenever that money came through to you, it could not be used to pay salaries, to pay for your facilities, to pay for your vehicles, to pay for anything operational. That's what charities are facing also. Nobody wants to pay as if magic fairies are going to make all this good work happen. So this was, this was really interesting to me on why a lot of charities aren't making more progress. So now I'm, here I am, I'm a decade into this journey I had, that I had now looking at this industry that I had de decided to take this chance on and dedicate my life to. And what I had learned is that it was an imbalanced, mismatched, time-sucking nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> One would think I would have walked away at this point, but I just knew there had to be a better way, and, and I'm an idea person, that's what I do, and I knew if I just kept looking. And so one day I had a chance encounter. I'm talking to a friend of mine who called me. He needed a brochure done for his business and asked me if I would help him. And I said, I don't really feel right charging you, you're a friend. And he said, well, you know, it's not fair for you to do it for free, we're a for-profit business. And I said, how about this? Here's an invoice, $1,500 is about what it costs. Why don't you write a check equivalent to that amount to an animal charity we both cared about, and we'll call it even. And that was when the light bulb went on. And all I kept thinking is, damn, that was easy. <laughs> he got what he wanted. He needed this service done, and he got it from a professional. I and the money went to charity. I got to, it was a very easy volunteer opportunity for me because I got to do what I do best and within a half a day raise money for a charity doing no drama. I didn't have to go find a volunteer opportunity, show up somewhere, fill out 50 forms and go through five orientations. I just got to volunteer doing what I do best. And a charity got money without lifting a finger. They just got a check in the mail. So that really got me thinking. There are, we all have skills, and we all have more skills than we even realize that we have. Whether it's something that you do professionally, or it happens to be a hobby that you're just very good at, that you could teach people, but rarely do the skills that you have match the volunteer needs and, and situations that charities have available for the charity that you care about. However, the skills that you have match the service needs of the millions, hundreds of millions of households and businesses worldwide. In the United States alone, there are over 132 million households hiring services every day. And we only make up 5% of the world's population. In the United States alone, again, there's 27 million businesses. And again, we make up a fraction. And through these households and these businesses, Every day, hundreds of millions of dollars in transactions happen. And if we could just tap into that, imagine the possibility. So that is how the invention that is Vula was born. And Vula is a portmanteau word, which is just a fancy way of saying two words brought together, which are volunteer plus moolah. And we are an online marketplace that brings together skilled volunteers that want to donate their services with customers that are willing, that want to hire those services and have the money that they've paid go to charity. So now you can get your hair done, take an art class, hire somebody to walk your dog, and the money can go to charity. And in one swoop, I accidentally came up with an idea that got rid of all the things that were bugging me. There is no imbalance. You can do one project or as many as you'd like as a volunteer. Also, there's no mismatch. It doesn't matter if that plumber that wants to help human trafficking, now he can do a plumbing project and the money goes to human trafficking. There's, and for the charity, they don't have to manage a volunteer and they don't have to go put their hand out. They get a check by turning their volunteers into fundraising machines for them. So you might be asking, why is this chance, or, or why is this idea a chance? And to me, I look at chance as two sides of the same coin. There's risk on one side, and there's opportunity or hope on the other side.
So as far as the risk aspect, I'm not sure if any of you have ever had the pleasure of taking the way that mankind has been doing something for hundreds and hundreds of years and trying to convince them to do it a completely different way. But in the short time I've been doing this, I have learned that's going to be a special challenge. It's going to make my last decade in this journey look like a walk in the park. Um, whenever I talk to people, I find I always have to, I explain it to them and then they're looking at me and they're like, I kind of get it. And then I give them a few more examples and then they're like, that is so cool. But clearly, we have a lot of rewiring to do to get people to understand how to do this. Um, but this is why the chance is so worth it. 27% of Americans volunteer, which sounds fantastic until you consider that 73% don't. But, and of that 27% that do volunteer, one third of them don't make it beyond a year. They finally just drop out and give up. And I don't believe it's because all these people don't care. It's because the model is broken and we have to work smarter and make it easier for people to get involved. So just imagine if we as a society could embrace this paradigm shift, this new way of doing things, this new way of volunteering and giving to charities, what the possibilities could be. If every CPA firm in the United States alone donated just one tax return project per year, each CPA firm, one project per year donated to charity, they alone could raise $28 million. If every cleaning company in the United States, with the hundreds of transactions each firm does every month, cleaning households and businesses, if they each donated just one service per month to charity, they would raise $90 million. And if every spa and salon in the country donated one facial, one service per month, they would raise over $200 million, doing hardly anything, doing what they do best and just giving a little bit of it, making it simple for everybody. On Vula, we have people who have hired people to design their wedding invitations. Uh, people have hired frequent travelers to give them advice and help their plan, them plan their family vacations. And my favorite is a kid who has, will teach you to play beer pong for a $5 donation. <laughs> we have all kinds of people on the site and the possibilities are endless. So what about you? As you think back to that first volunteer experience that you had, how different could it have been if you could have used your skills that day to help any charity you wanted? And how much more impact could you have made? So reinventing the way volunteers, donors, and charities all interact is no small in, uh, undertaking. But I believe that the chance could change everything. I hope you will join me. Thank you.